I'm here with Jules Pfeiffer, and we're talking about our old pal Erwin Hazen. Uh, what do you have to say about Erwin? I'm handing it over to you, Jules. Well, I primarily knew Erwin in the early days, the old days. Uh, the old days of 1989 as, as, or so? As the house cartoonist at the Café des Artistes Bar. Holy smokes. Uh, because virtually any time I walked in there, Erwin was at the bar having a scotch. And because I didn't want to be antisocial, I would join him. And several days went by. And we would talk, and he, and which meant Erwin would talk, and I would listen. And then occasionally I'd say something, and Erwin would talk some more, and I would listen. Uh, because Erwin was uh, a, a holder of the entire history of comic books from the, you know, virtually the beginning of the near beginning. And, uh, and before he was Erwin Hazen and just starting out, uh, he knew all of those guys that I loved and admired. And, like who? Uh, uh, you know, and well, I mean, he started in with DC, as I recall, mm -hmm. and, uh, and was a DC boy. And, um, uh, and always found himself, always thought of himself as having fallen into the right place and being very lucky to be around there and being lucky. I mean, Erwin always felt that for some reason or other, as skilled as he was, uh, that he, he had fallen into something, he was lucky. And it never had to do with his own brilliance, and he was brilliant. The thing about Erwin was that he was always fresh, is always fresh, always, always youthful, uh, boyish. You know, the joy about, first of all, the thing I always loved about cartoonists from the time I was a kid is, first of all, as a, as a profession, everyone is somewhat crazy. I mean, there are no sane cartoonists, and and um, and, or if they are, they're not very interesting, <laughs> and probably not very good. Uh, and um, and also that they love what they do and they communicate it. And no one did that better than Erwin. Erwin uh, would always say to me, after a sizable number of scotches, I, I you know, say I can't believe I got away with it. <laughs> and and I would say to him after a similar number of scotches, his response, Erwin, that's what every cartoonist says. <laughs>
that you know, that's the the business preferred a slickness to the, to a sense of reality. And I've been that way for a long time. It's just still like that now, I think. Do you, do you yeah. agree? And uh, that's why I lost interest in the business. I, I asked Irwin who he, because he started out very young, I once asked him who he learned from, who, who did he model himself after? And he looked at me puzzled, puzzled. I don't, and, and he said, I don't think anybody, I, you know, he just fooled around. Uh, I mean, everybody learns from everybody else, and everybody picks up stuff from everybody else, but Irwin conscious, so far as I know, or so far as what he says, didn't consciously ape anybody else. I mean, I was trying to be Eisner, I was trying to be Kniff. Irwin wasn't trying to be, Irwin was having a hard enough time being Irwin. He's, he's yeah. eternally optimistic. Yeah. Um, he can be pissed off. I mean, you know, he, a, a lot of people in the business screwed him. And, um, and he's probably pissed off about it, but then he doesn't hold it. I mean, it's not as if he would hold a grudge against any of these people who fucked him over. If they came over and wanted to shake hands or buy him a drink, he would suddenly be their best friend again. Uh, the guy is uh, an all-American sweetheart who worked for all-American comics. It all, it all fits. Is there anything else you'd like to, to throw in there at the end that we can... Yeah, fuck you, Irvin.